Hurricane Nicole is bearing down on Florida. Good evening, I'm Mike Naso with this 10 p.m. update, Eastern Time, on Hurricane Nicole, a Category 1 hurricane, which has just left Grand Bahama Island after going over Abaco Island and Grand Bahama throughout the day. It is now over the Gulf Stream, and it is forecast to make landfall over the next 6 to 12 hours along the eastern coastline there of Florida as a hurricane. Here is the latest from the National Hurricane Center on Nicole as of 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Hurricane Nicole was at 27.0 north, 78.9 west, and uh, that puts it only about 75 miles east-northeast of West Palm Beach and is moving west-northwest at 13. So if you do the math, it should be making landfall in the wee hours of the morning, uh, maybe a little before, maybe a little after, as a hurricane. The pressure is now down to 980 millibars. So again, some strengthening is still possible, not much, but it looks like it's going to come ashore as a hurricane along the Florida coastline. Hurricane warnings in effect, obviously, there from the uh, areas of Boca Raton all the way to the Flagler Volusia County line. And we have storm surge advisories, including all the way up to Georgia because of the high wind field, the large wind field with this system. I'm going to talk about that in a second. The forecast brings it inland, and by later tomorrow night, Thursday night, it should skirt up the Big Bend, and then by Friday be out of here over North Carolina and dissipate as it gets captured by a... Uh, Long wave trough moving through the uh, eastern United States. We won't have to deal with Nicole anymore. However, it is going to spread rainfall up the eastern seaboard. I'm going to talk about that as well. Here's the Miami radar, and this is uh, showing the eye there. It is a large eye up to 50 miles across, and that is uh, confirmed by the aircraft that are flying out there doing a great job. It does appear as though it sucked in some drier air. Remember, conditions are favorable enough for a hurricane, but it's still almost mid-November, and this time of year it's not quite as favorable. So again, thank goodness for that. We don't want it to get too strong, but it is still a hurricane with this very big fat eye of a donut there headed for the west-northwest right now. It was west-southwest last night, then west throughout the day, so it's starting to round the uh, periphery of the ridging there, and that should bring it ashore somewhere here south of the Fort Pierce area. But if you are in Vero Beach or even Melbourne, you guys are going to have heavy weather spreading on shore. I did want to take a note of some of these buoys here. There's a uh, buoy here uh, east of Cape Canaveral, and that is showing right now winds gusting up to 46 knots. If we go further north towards Jacksonville, this one has uh, very high waves, and this also has wind speeds up here getting close to a tropical storm force on some of these right there, gusting to 34 knots. So this is well away from the center, and this should continue all the way up the uh, eastern seaboard here. Look at that. Winds gusting to almost 45 miles an hour, and that is off the coastline there of South Carolina. In fact, that's right off the coastline of Charleston and Mount Pleasant. So this is what I was talking about. The wind field with this storm is very, very large, and so that's going to impact a large area with the onshore flow, and this will create a water rise. Here's the storm surge forecast for Hurricane Nicole, and from North Palm Beach all the way to Altamaha Sound in Georgia, three to five feet, and we've seen videos before, before the sun went down, we've seen videos showing that onshore flow there, flooding areas along the beach. So again, this is not a 20-foot storm surge or anything like that, but five feet of water with crashing waves on top of it, that can be dangerous and certainly it could cause some damage. The mouth of the St. Johns River also seen the water rise there, uh, to say nothing of the South Carolina coastline. The way this area is shaped makes it susceptible, especially when you have a fetch of wind from a counterclockwise hurricane and then the clockwise flow of the high pressure to the north of the hurricane. I've been talking about that for a few days. You get the coastal erosion because you have winds from the high pressure and winds from the low pressure, and that's all bearing erosion there along the coastline of Florida and Georgia. There's another look at the water vapor, and it does have a pretty ghostly appearance on satellite. Clearly there is dry air impacting it, which is great news. So even though it's a strengthening hurricane, a minimal hurricane, it is not strengthening very fast, even while it's over those warm Gulf Stream waters. And again, the eye is large enough to where we won't see any rapid strengthening up or down, it doesn't look like. Usually when systems are smaller, they can crank up and down very quickly. This system's rather broad and ill-defined as, as far as the diameter of the eye 
and uh, the radius of maximum sustained winds is so large, that means it's going to have trouble shrinking down and consolidating. Nevertheless, still a good moisture fetch here, especially on the northern side. That's what I'm talking about. So if you're in the Keys here, you might not have that much of a problem, but if you are up in Cape Canaveral, Fernandina Beach, Daytona, you guys are going to be in for a rough night and morning. Be on the lookout for power outages. Here's the rainfall forecast. As I mentioned, there is that trough moving through, and that's going to help pick up Nicole after the hurricane makes landfall, and that track should allow moisture to spread up. And again, this is over the next two days. Three to four inches of rainfall in some areas here of North Florida and Georgia, and that's why we could have the threat of flash flooding as the hurricane pulls on to the north. So again, Hurricane Nicole, a Category 1 storm, is leaving the northern Bahamas now on track to make landfall in Florida on the east coast. If you are in Fort Pierce, uh, areas there near Vero Beach, Melbourne, be on alert, hunker down. It's going to be a rough ride tonight with the landfall of a hurricane in the state of Florida. I'm Mike Naso with continuing coverage. I'll talk to you next time.